I'm going to talk about ethical framework for a web immunization score on uh, Twitter. And we defined um, web immunization as individual or group susceptibility to misinformation on social media. And this uh, machine learning uh, element of our uh, of our project is, is only part of this pro of this project. And I will try to focus uh, only on 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 this on this part and try to analyze uh, ethical elements of this uh, project. But at the beginning, of course, I have to make uh, some uh, the disclaimer and disclosure. I have a conflict of interest. However, this is not a mm, financial conflict of interest. This uh, this conflict uh, is due to my double role in this project. So on the one hand, I'm a project leader. So of course, uh, my goal is to navigate our research project to the fruitful end. And I would like to uh, omit and avoid all uh, possible problems. But on the other hand, I'm a bi bioethicist interested in research ethics with a background in, in philosophy. And I would like to uh, analyze all important uh, ethical uh, problems posed by, by our re research project. And uh, we uh, invite you to take part in the seminar. We also in invited some external experts also uh, to avoid our blind spots to 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 really take advantage of some outside um, perspective. Uh, when I'm when uh, I'm going to analyze uh, our project, and I will be using uh, 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 ethical framework which was elaborated by Norwegian National Ethics Committee. It, it is present in the guide to Internet Research Ethics, and it con uh, and it, this framework consists of uh, four different dimensions that should be covered by every ethical analysis. So the first dimension is accessibility of public sphere. The second is interaction with participants. The third is sensitivity of information that is collected dur during the research project. And finally, the fourth is about vulnerability of uh, participants. So let's let's get started with the first dimension accessibility of public sphere. So it was already mentioned by by Elizabeth. We Twitter is usually considered to be a, a let's say a public sphere, and the goal of our project is to build machine learning models that will predict individual and group. Uh, web immunization score, so individual and group susceptibility to misinformation, and it will be based on their activity on social media. But in our project, we select actually to collect data from one uh, social medium from Twitter. So we will use Twitter API services to uh, collect massive amount of data and be able to estimate individual and group uh, susceptibility to miss uh, information. And of course, the first question that can be asked is do as researchers, do we have a right to collect identifiable data uh, and how our right, supposed or uh, uh, right, uh, can be related to users' uh, expectations. And uh, the data on, on, on Twitter uh, is very difficult to be de-identified or anonymized uh, because uh, every single tweet is um, connected to the whole conversation. And uh, in a tweet, not only the content of the tweet is important, but all metadata that is associated and linked to that, uh, to that tweet. So in order to to really understand the tweet, we have to connect it to other tweets, to the whole conversation. Is it just a, a sent, standing alone tweet, a response to someone, retweet, retweet with quote, who sent this tweet, and mapping uh, and like uh, trying to put a single tweet into a in, in, into this whole context, make it all, almost impossible to the identify because we if we identify a tweet, it loses its uh, 
research or data potential, it it it, it becomes useless from um, uh, researchers' uh, perspective. Uh, and generally, as it was mentioned uh, by Elizabeth, uh, from the regulatory point of view, of course, we are allowed to do both terms of service and development agreement of uh, Twitter allows us to collect the data and also terms of services on Twitter. They are very um, explicitly um, say that uh, Twitter is disseminating the content that uh, users are sending uh, on Twitter. Um, how, however, uh, developer agreements put some restrictions or how this data could be used. I will I will then discuss it a little bit later. From the uh, from the federal regulatory point of view, so both from European perspective and GDPR, and from US perspective from the Common Rule, uh, of this data is considered to be more or less public and uh, uh, available for uh, research. And for instance, uh, Article Nine of uh, GDPR says that it is not prohibited to process data which are manifestly made public. And one can uh, reasonably argue that the data on Twitter are manifestly made public. However, uh, as Nicholas uh, Gold realizes, uh, Twitter uh, imposes certain restrictions on researchers and those who want to uh, use the, tw the, the data from, uh, from Twitter. And for instance, Twitter uh, forbids to reuse deleted content. Uh, and uh, th that's why Nicholas Gold says that we should not consider uh, data on Twitter to be public data, but rather private data on public display. Uh, and we can also see that uh, Twitter users are even not aware of the fact that their like ma ma majority of Twitter users uh, is not aware that researchers use Twitter for research sake. And uh, however, uh, quite substantial uh, percentage of uh, Twitter user would not would not opt out from research if it is uh, possible. So they. Mm, uh, would still uh, uh, participate in research. But one third of uh, research user, as if it were uh, possible, would, would opt out from, uh, from research and would not like to provide their uh, data to uh, researchers. Mm, so we are in, in, the sit in the situation when we have to somehow balance uh, the discourse of data ownership, which is uh, mostly present in the US context. And uh, in the European context, we rather think about uh, data as an inalienable per individual possession, which can be controlled by individuals and political community. But we have to also balance these two aspects with public benefits. So on the one hand, this is private data on public display, so we should also respect its private or, or the, 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 this element of control, or of individual control, but also weighted against uh, possible public benefit. And when we talk about uh, another aspect of uh, research, in, in, in interaction with participants, in, at this uh, at this uh, stage of our project, we are not going to uh, interact with participants. Um, when, but uh, sensitivity of uh, information, uh, however, is is very important in this in this context. Uh, and especially uh, important is a uh, concept of uh, group privacy. So usually we um, think about privacy in terms of individual or group rights. And we even think that well-defined and self-proclaimed groups such as families, ethnic minorities, or a group, e even group of patients who are diagnosed with uh, specific uh, conditions, 
that they have a certain rights that and they can claim these rights and uh, seek justice in front of of uh, of a court. Uh, and this, for to to give an uh, to give an example of of such group claim, we can, for instance, uh, uh, think about uh, Havasupai tribe. That is, in bioethical context, this uh, the this research project was um, uh, was quite popular to uh, discuss. So researchers violated, let's say privacy of this uh, ethnic uh, minority of this ethnic group uh, because they use their blood samples without community uh, consent and they assessed uh, risk of mental disorders such as schizophrenia and alcoholism and uh, they also use their uh, genetic material to study their uh, their their history and uh, the genetic origin and doing so they undermined their self uh, identity beliefs and the the, the tribe recognized it as a, as a in, uh, violation of the of their group privacy and they sued the the university but when we think about group privacy in the context of machine learning we are uh, we cannot use this uh, this concept of well-defined group which ha can have certain legal representation because these groups which are formed uh, in the process of uh, machine learning when we discover certain characteristic and we can say that one individual belongs to that group one individual uh, by the way can belong to many different groups these groups, uh, these individuals are not even aware of this fact. They don't know that they belong to, to one or many different groups. And uh, they don't have any kind of representation, but still they can uh, be a subject of certain algorithmic intervention. And because they don't have knowledge about this intervention, they cannot seek redress uh, before the courts and um, uh, they are not recognized by the uh, legal system. And uh, one thing that that uh, has to be mentioned also that uh, to, uh, that the concept of group privacy is very closely related to profiling. And Twitter uh, developer agreement explicitly uh, prohibits uh, Profiling. So the Twitter the development agreement says that targeting, segmenting, or profiling individuals based on sensitive personal information like health, negative financial uh, situation, and so on, uh, cannot be uh, cannot be used by uh, those who use Twitter API. Uh, so right now we have to ask. We, we are facing three. Uh, let's say ethical questions. So the first question is how uh, we should treat Twitter uh, development agreement. Is, is this uh, agreement legally binding or ethically binding for, for us? Mm, do we uh, really exhaust uh, and meet definition of, uh, of profiling in our research project? And how we are going to uh, protect group uh, privacy, how how we are thinking about uh, protection of, of of group privacy. So the first question: how uh, how important is from ethical and from legal perspective uh, Twitter agreement with uh, developers? So from the legal perspective, um, that the, there is already some case law which uh, indicates that this uh, kind of agreements are recognized at least in by the uh, American uh, justice uh, system. Uh, however, I think that there are quite strong ethical arguments which can say that uh, in certain circumstances, this agreement can be, let's say, uh, violated or overridden. So uh, companies such Twitter, Google, Facebook uh, have a very strong uh, uh, influence on our politics, uh, not only on elections, but also on uh, discourse uh, and political uh, discussions. 
uh, and I I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, a democratic society has has to have some some instruments have ha have to has to uh, oversee in, uh, their actions, and researchers are probably best situated to really uh, put a check on this on this companies and and. Uh, uh, examine their uh, activities. However, of course, this kind of research projects should be carefully uh, overseen and reviewed by external uh, ethics uh, committees, and also should have uh, legal support from re from research institutions. And of course, uh, right now I, I want to stress and emphasize that we are not going to to violate uh, Twitter. Uh, agreement, and this is not what we what we are thinking we are doing in in, in our uh, research uh, project. So, what is the definition of uh, of uh, profiling? So, profiling is a technique to automatically process personal and non-personal data aimed at developing predictive knowledge. Mm. Uh, and that knowledge subsequently be applied as a basis for decision making. So I think that that we have to uh, draw attention to these two elements. So on the one hand, predictive knowledge, on the other hand, decision making. And of course, our project aim is to create predictive knowledge. But uh, we are not going to make any intervention about these individuals, which let's say provide us with with the data. However, we are very aware of the fact that this data could be used in in that way. How, however, we won't um, perform any kind of intervention um, at this stage of the project, and every future intervention would be uh, coupled with um, informed consent. Uh, process. What about vulnerability of uh, participants? So the last uh, dimension of uh, our analysis and vulnerability usually in the context of biomedical research uh, refers to the to, to, to the moment when we involve uh, participants into a research project and those who have some kind of cognitive and lead uh, cognitive and those people who, who do not have sufficient cognitive capability or who don't have legal capacity are usually um, unable to make informed decision about themselves and they are recognized to be uh, vulnerable in the context of biomedical uh, research. But uh, I think that, the, the, that the, uh, this concept of vulnerability really doesn't apply to our research uh, project, also because we are not going to obtain informed consent from from uh, our par participants, from the Twitter um, users. S however, I think that uh, we that our uh, that some of our uh, participants are vulnerable in that situation because uh, I think that susceptibility to misinformation can be understood in terms of vulnerability. So people who have diminished ability to make autonomous decision in the information environment of social media are vulnerable in this in this uh, circumstances. And those who cannot recognize uh, misinformation and who spread this misinformation are vulnerable in information environment. So what about protection. I said that uh, informed consent in our project would be very impractical and we are uh, also from the regulative perspective is, is not required. However, uh, Neil Dickert and, 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 and his colleagues uh, in a very interesting article published in American uh, Journal of Bioethics uh, recognize that informed consent uh, is a procedure that has a lot of different functions. Actually, they distinguish between seven different functions on informed consent. And this function can be also realized by other procedures or other um, or other actions. So for instance, one of, of the function of informed consent is to make the process of research transparent. And 
by being present on social media and also disseminating information on our uh, on our research project we are going to let's say to try to meet this element uh, this function of in, in inform con consent so we would like to inform uh, let's say twitter's sphere that we are conducting this kind of research and uh, what it means for 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 twitter users another form of protection that we are uh, thinking about is uh, uh, limited data sharing, especially when we talk about this data set that contains data from uh, from Twitter and the model that will uh, uh, allow us to predict the uh, web immunization score of individual and groups because we don't want we don't want this model to be used by any bad actors to, for instance, target susceptible individuals and groups with disinformation. So uh, we were thinking about some kind of data access committee uh, that will limit and vet the uh, data requests. And also we will not um, share the very model of, uh, of data, but only a su surrogate model which allows to validate our research, but which doesn't allow to um, for instance, to, to, to replicate and to target uh, vulnerable uh, individuals. And generally, I think that uh, our research project, of course, there is a lot of uh, ethically, let's say, sensitive issues. I think that, that we rather, uh, that, that one of the uh, ethical uh, laws of information ethics, which was formulated by um, Floridi, which says that uh, entropy ought not to be caused in the infosphere is uh, is justification for uh, for our for our pro project. We want to limit misinformation and this is also uh, uh, how we serve, let's say, public uh, interest doing this research. So we are not doing this uh, for just for fun or just out of pure curiosity. Okay, thank you very much.